Hello, my name is Margaret Adele, and welcome to the February Roll for TBR. And I am so excited because I won. I got the level up. I read all of the books that I put on my January TBR. No substitutions. And granted, there were only five, but I still did it. And that means I get a whole bunch of more fun stuff for rolling this month. In fact, not only did I read all of the books on that TBR, I read currently 17 books as I film this. And maybe if I can finish one more by the end of the month, 18. And that is like tied for my record. And it's the first month of the year. So <laughs> I'm really excited, uh, but let's jump into uh, exactly how my reading went, what my thoughts were uh, only on the books that I had on the TBR. I'm not going to talk about all 17 and or 18, uh, but let's jump into it and then we can get to the roll. First up, I had the TBR Vet, Whispers of Stone by Allegra Pescatore. This was my review, Goliath, and I did it. And yes, I was very confused. It's a high fantasy, and I waited way too long between installments. So when the author turned around and offered me the third one, did I immediately accept it so that I could get started right away? No, I don't learn. <laughs> Instead, I accepted a different book that I had from her on my TBR because I wanted to put it on the next version of uh, the Neurodivergence and Disability in Fiction list. So, you know, um, probably won't wait a year this time. Um, and generally speaking, I did like it. It was nice. A lot of it went over my head, but uh, as much as it was a point A to point B middle of a trilogy book, the tension was nice and I'm really excited for where the third book is going to go. So overall, a pretty decent deal. Up next for a book with heavy topics, I went with another review book, That Guy in Our Women's Studies class by Alan D. Hunter. I was a little bit nervous about this one and as it turns out, uh, my nerves were correct. Not the biggest fan of this one. Uh, the narrative memoir really suffers when it's being narrative and the uh, main character is kind of insufferable in a way that's very strange for an autobiography to be. Uh, so I won't be continuing with this narrative memoir series, but again, at least I got a review book read. Up next, I had Return to a Favorite Author, and for this, I picked Games with the Orc by Catherine Moon, and this one was delightful. I actually read it as part of my 24-hour readathon that I began the month with, and I'm almost kind of bummed that I read it as a 24-hour readathon because this book probably should have been spaced out a little bit more, just the sheer amount of sex scenes. It felt like so much in such a short period of time, um, but it was very sweet. I definitely will be continuing with that series, and I'm even more hyped for that author's next book coming out this summer. Number four, we had finished a series, and for this one, I picked Let Me Free You by Alexandria House. Technically, uh, there is also a novella in this series, so... Judging by certain metrics, this might not be a finished series. However, I don't traditionally read all the novellas in a series, and this is the last one chronologically, so I'm counting it. Um, and I did like this. It was not my favorite. Uh, the first is still my favorite, but uh, it was very intriguing. I liked the more metaphysical nature of it, and I'm happy to have another series done. Lastly, I got TBR Vet again, and so I went with The Tomb of Hercules by Andy McDermott. This is not a review book, but I have had this series on my list for forever, and I'd really like the first one, but then this book turned out to be the biggest disappointment of the month. You see, in book one, all about Atlantis, Atlantis, like, is the thing. It's the thing that the protagonist has been searching for her entire life, carrying on the legacy of her parents who were also searching for it. It's the big thing the villains wanted, and it was key to the reveal of the villains. But in this book, the titular Tomb of Hercules doesn't actually matter that much. Uh, the protagonist only wants it because she wants a feather in her cap, and the uh, villains only want it because they want a large amount of treasure, and it could have been any treasure. And the part that actually had the Tomb of Hercules, like going through and you had to like solve puzzles that were recreations of the uh, labors of Hercules, really cool, but it was such a tiny part of it. Such a tiny part, and so much of the rest of it was like generic uh, political thriller fodder and I was like that's not that's not why you read these books that's not why you're interested in this and so I have gotten to the point where I'm going to give this series one more shot because there are so many books in this there are it's still getting published today and this I read this like as a teenager <laughs> from my father's stash and it's still getting published today so I'm going to give it one more chance and if I don't like the next book right after this 
we're going to be done with the series. I do still like the idea of it, so I'm willing to be optimistic. I just wish that they'd actually cared more about the history thing instead of the, the generic political thriller stuff. So, because I read the exact TBR as I set it up, I will get the bookworm's blessing. That's right, I'm naming things now. And that means that I get a modifier of plus three for everything I roll this month. I also read six review books, which means I get a reward of the reviewer where I can re-roll two times. So I can either decide to re-roll two different dice for two different picks once or roll the same different dice two times but I only have the two so if that first re-roll I don't like it and I roll again I've still lost both the re-rolls so here's hoping we have six books to pick this month is smaller and I'm not going to do a 24-hour readathon so I'm not going to have as much space here but I think we can make it work but please dice gods I have answered your challenge last month be kind to me now here today we also have a new little dragon friend. It was made by my mutual Linne H on Twitter, and it's an honor of one of my D and D characters. So this feels appropriate. Now, <sighs> roll one. Ooh. All right, I rolled a twelve plus three. That is fifteen, and that is a mid grade. This one was a little bit tricky. I don't have any mid grade on my review list right now. Just a couple young adults is the youngest it gets. And so I went and I looked down at the bottom of my shelf, which is where all my mid grade is. And I went and I went with Deep Blue by Jennifer Donnelly. Now, from what I can tell, a lot of people have called this book YA. But the thing is, is that one, it's Scholastic. And two, it's published by Disney Hyperion, which tends to go younger and from what I saw on the Amazon listing it's meant for ages 10 and up so I'm gonna go for it's one of those like cuspy meant for that weird age of mid-grade to young adult uh, but this as far as I can tell is about a prophecy of Daughters of Marrow and I'm just gonna go on a limb here and say mermaids and there are five of them six of them in a prophecy and they gotta do stuff so <laughs> i mean the stuff it, like it looks pretty that like the inside and stuff looks cool i like the way the book looks i hope it's good <laughs> and uh not off to the best start for getting my review books read all right let's see if we can keep the above 10 train going here come on okay all right, 13 plus 3 is 16, and we've got Continue a Series, Insert Coin to Play by Jennifer R. Donahue. Specifically, it's the only series I can continue on my review list. <laughs> and uh, this one I'm really excited for because this is a series all about a trio of thieves in this slightly futuristic world. You have Bristol, the fancy socialite one, uh, who's like the best at kind of interrogating people and being secretive in that way. You have Dolly, who is the kind of gruffer arms dealer uh, strength one. And then you have my favorite, Bits, who is the nerdy tech genius of the group. And uh, each book takes a turn with who the POV character is. And we're back to Bits. I'm really excited about that. Uh, all I can remember off the top of my head is this book's like 120 pages. All of the books in this series are pretty short. And uh, it is dealing with like one of those the video game hides a dark secret you know that kind of thing um and i i love that the series has dealt with uh bits and her uh rather unhealthy addiction to technology before and i'm interested to see that delved into a little deeper and in general it's just uh, a nice quick read in a world that's just sci-fi enough to be fun without requiring a ton of extra thought and rule number three Why does it always repeat? Yeah, no shade to the dice gods, but I cannot do another mid-grade. All right, we're re-rolling that because I don't have that much mid-grade on my list. <sighs> this, 
actually works out better. Two plus three equals five, and five is for TBR Vet. So I went back to my review list, and we went with Fracture by EJ Fish. This is the fourth, fifth, I can't even remember, book in the uh, Ziva Paven series. Uh, this is a, a militaristic future sci-fi world, and I loved the ending of the previous book in the series. Obviously, I can't talk about it because giant spoilers, but I really liked this one. And also, uh, I know, because the author told me, because this is for review, that this book ends on a giant cliffhanger. Uh, they mentioned that this book and the next book, which I also have, uh, were meant to be one book originally, and they just got too big. So... <laughs> This might end gigantically. I might maybe will jump into the next one and review them both together because that's how they suggested I do it. But I do have them as separate entities on my like TBR list. So I don't know. I might just have to suffer through a giant cliffhanger in this uh, big sci-fi world. But I'm really looking forward. I swear I swear there's a slow burn romance in there. I swear it. And also, uh, pretty good found family vibes. I'm a fan. I just hope that the ending of this one doesn't cut me. Roll number four. Ooh. The dice gods really said, oh, you want a TBR bet? Bet. And we got it again. And for this one, I again went back to my review list because there is another book that I had around the same time as the last one and that is Home to the Wild by Francesca McMahon. This is a YA all about uh, a girl who uh, was essentially raised by wolves and always felt different and now the big bad, a threat, it's kind of vague, has come to uh, threaten her family and she must do the thing. <laughs> I don't really know much more than that. Um, this will be an interesting read because the format of the digital file that I have as a review copy is not the easiest to read. Uh, so I'm probably going to end up having to read it on my laptop, which I've done before for review books. It's just not necessarily my favorite. Um, and I'm getting a little concerned that I have all of these books that I can't read at work necessarily, which is going to make reading all of them harder, but we'll, we'll make it work. Okay, okay, it's fine. We can get it back. We can get it back. Why? Why are the dice gods so determined to make me read mid-grade? My inner child is already healing. We're good. Another reroll because it went super well last time. Come on. Okay. All right, another 13 plus 3, and that is 16. And so that is another continuous series. And for this one, uh, I didn't have any more series to continue in my review list, but there was one series that I told myself I am going to finish this year because I have been putting it off. And that is A Perilous Hunt by Lindsay Baroker. This is one of my favorite space opera series, but because I love it so much, I have like slowed down reading them because I know I'm starting to get towards the end. I believe there's eight books and this is like book seven. So like everything's going to happen. And obviously I can't tell you a lot about it, but the uh, general overview of the series is there was recently a war, the rebellion overthrew the Empire, and this rebellion pilot was kind of left on this dusty planet, and she is determined to uh, track down her daughter that she was separated from during the war, and so she, you know, assembles the, the standard ragtag crew on the ship, and as she goes to search for her daughter, big things happen, big secrets are revealed that affect the entire state of the world as it is now. There's a lot of talk of, uh, are they really better off now? Because there were some benefits to the bureaucracy of the Empire, even if she doesn't like to admit it. And she's totally having a slow burn romance with the cyborg that did fight for the Empire. It's totally enemies to lovers. Oh my gosh. Anyway, <laughs> I'm really excited for this one, but I'm also sad because I know that this one and another one and then it's done and this has been one of the long-standing series on my channel that I've talked about 
so I might get like weirdly emotional about it, but I, I gotta get it done. I, I gotta finish it because there are other things from this author I would like to look into, but I feel like I don't wanna jump into those until this one is done. So that's that's what we're doing this time. All right, something not 12, please. Well, it's not 12. 11 plus three is 14. And for this, uh, the prompt is BIPOC author, specifically BIPOC. And I thought I had one on my review list. And then it turns out the one I thought I had, I'd already reviewed in January. And I had a POC author on my review list, uh, a Latin author. And I also have like disabled and neurodivergent and uh, queer authors on my list. Uh, but need to step up my game with the BIPOC authors, apparently. However, there was a book that I've been tossing around the idea of reading. But it's big and it's high fantasy. But we're going to try it anyway. So <laughs> for this prompt, we are going with The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. This is a high fantasy based on, I believe, African culture involving a woman who was a child soldier, like does a whole trusts no one but her fellow soldiers type, and a princess whose evil uncle is on the throne because it is it even a high fantasy if there's not an evil uncle on the throne? Uh, recruits are our child soldier to help basically keep the rebels from causing too much chaos while the princess tries to take evil uncle off the throne to change the country from the better without it falling into war so it's chunky uh it's sapphic non-western and you know queer and non-western is my favorite kind of high fantasy but it is nearly 500 pages i have heard good things i've heard great things and I do want to get to it. I was really lucky to stumble across this in a secondhand store. And I've always told myself I'm going to read it. It's just it's so thick. And I have so many review books to read. And <laughs> it's a shorter month. And I'm not going to have a 24-hour readathon. And suddenly all of my good I won feelings are starting to twist. But it's okay. It's okay. We'll manage it. So that is it. All of the books that I have for the month of February, six books on my TBR, and both of my Reward of the Reviewer and Bookworm's Blessing are poof, are gone, will not return <laughs> unless I once again beat my TBR challenge. It could be, could be a time, but you know what? I'm willing to be hopeful, and uh, who knows? Maybe next time I can review nine books and get myself another reroll because I have a feeling I'm probably going to need it. Uh, but regardless, <laughs> what are you looking forward to in the month of February? Any anticipated releases? Do you have a TBR? Would you want to try a TBR game? Let me know down in the comments below. And with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.